This is one last crimson heart. Fairly new. Are these? Yes. One last crimson heart. That's all that. That's all there was. Junk's good. No. Scourge closed the light room. Barely breathing. The only light was his liver. Holly. And a flickering and gas sinks bulb. There we go, sinks in one of them. Bulb strung up in the center of the room. Directly under the fleeing, fleeting yellow table. Oh, I say table. Yellow light sat a green box atop a withered, one legged round table. Both were stained and blotches of red. Young started at the boggy box, eyes wide and mouth watering. He was completely transfixed by the sight. I was still remembering extre remaining extremely aware of this polish room. He trained his focus on the room as well as every sound of silence that echoed through the hallway. Beyond the door, it was back, which he left open. Just a crack. Surely he would be punished if he were to discover eating the last heart, but he just couldn't help himself. The lid was still sealed, so he wouldn't have lost all of its freshness. He had to have it. He would have it. Don took a carefully calculated step towards the box. Another. He yeah, had to stay focused on the hallway. But being so close to salvation, <laughs> practically, all he could hear was his breath and the beating of his own crimson heart. Probably not even picking me up on the microphone right now, are you? <sighs> Johnny held deeply. And he'll get there. Get another step, then two more. Should he run for it? It was so close. Early, no one would hear him. He braced himself for speed. Froze completely. That is annoying right there. Sorry about that. Back to sleep. Should he run for it? It was so close. Surely no one would hear him. He braced himself for speed. Rose completely. The echo of a voice swam down the hall and struck him with a fierceness that stopped him in his tracks. Crap. Did he try to hide? Wasn't much clutter in the room, but maybe enough for him to blend. He wasn't very large. Still, just a boy, in fact. Maybe he could. No. Okay, so I'm tired of all the eggs. Eggs, but okay. No, we discovered moving to high to a hiding place would cause too much noise. He stuck his ground, continuing to hold his breath. The voice was subsiding. But still, he knew it was not safe. The voice did not act alone. It had been speaking to someone at the other end of the hall. Though so John heard the first voice leave, he could hear the second begin to walk. Begin to walk to the end. The first voice was Walk past the door behind John. It'd be passing that room. The room where the most, where he most certainly was not meant to be. How long would it take the steps? Would he truly be discovered? How would he explain such a scenario? Would anyone believe his lies? He assumed he had enough time to resume breathing, at least for a moment. He let out a slow, silent breath. He did the same in words. He gets this action at least three times. Before cutting it all 
together once again. The footsteps were getting closer and John's heart pounded even harder with every skip, every echoing boom of a skip, like a call to death. The skip stopped at the door, just beyond John. You could feel sweet, I'm sweat, I don't know. Picture spelling, I guess, me. Falling from his brow. A salty scream fell into his eyes. But he did not scream. This pain felt how would being uh, this pain he felt now would be nothing compared to what would follow if he were caught in this room. They were to believe he was there to skip a last heart. He didn't even want to think the consequences. Okay, so pause in this story. Um, creepy boss nowadays apparently reading this. Like, uh, give them more information that makes you question and then they answer it at the end. It's mainly creepy pascas, it, it's meant to keep asking you questions. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna shut up. Resume. <laughs> you heard the curious voice behind the door. The door that left open to a beg you hear the hall. Oh god, what was he thinking? It's childish gluttony. It got into the beggar of him and it would no doubt cost him his life. Thousands of thoughts flushed through his, the boy's mind in a second. He carefully turned his head towards the door to watch it open even further. Fear gripped John. With his icy clutches, ex-icy clutches, and Violently shook him where he stood. Surely his heart would explode inside just before they get to him. Surely his lungs would fell and collapse. Surely he would die. But the door stopped open. Didn't move for what felt like an eternity. The well of the knob swiftly, uh, swiftly shut the door words, and continued down the hall. John could feel tears pick prickering his eyes. His entire body shook with a heartbeat and fear. His head began to throb. No matter how hard he swallowed, the lump in his throat was there to stay. He nearly collapsed right there, then, but he simply couldn't afford it. He would have to sing a prayer of his gratitude, but not now. No, he had come too far. Not to see this thing through. He wiped the tears from his eyes with a sweaty palm with his a uh, yeah. Which only made them burn more. Breathing as softly as he could. John continued forward for John continued forwardly. Finally Oh wait, no, soft. Finally. Was all he could think. Finally, finally, finally. He stood there before the box, with the blood skin bottom. Even the table which was had sat seemed to be stained with both disgust and recent juices. As of the hooks alive. He reached out to the box slowly, and removed the leg with more careful precision than he had ever applied to anything before in a short life. He stared at the heart and felt that he had spoke. He had a broken pipe. Saliva was pouring profusely and filling his mouth. Nothing else mattered now. He grabbed the heart, sunk his developing teeth into it with a wet, cracking sound, and closed his eyes. He never experienced anything nearly as euphoric as eating a human heart. A wave of pure ecstasy washed over the boy as he stood alone, severing every detail of this moment. The taste, texture, the danger, everything was perfectly overwhelming. It was, it was funny for him to think that something so delicious could have been living in his own chest. 
tore chunk out of the heart and chewed it slowly. Luck spluttered down towards the box with his bite, and he could feel it beginning to soak his chin. His shirt was wet and his hands stained red. It still has a sense of warmth to it. Amazing, he thought. Still alone in the room, I shut, consuming this wonderfully forbidding treat. For a long while, she savored every drop, every moment. It was so juicy. Chewy, tender, and all the right places. While applying a soft squeeze. He even drank from one of the... One of the holes before ripping it off and chewing it up. Uh, the ventricles were one of John's favorite parts. It felt like a straw going... Imagine that, just eating a heart. Just blood. The fit pouring from one of the ventricles. Tipping the heart in your mouth. It's a little bit like the blood. Anyway. Eating. He often liked them grilled, but nothing compared to eating one raw. Eating one fresh, even less to the center of the heart. It was the most prom of pompous part. The most full, like a candy gusher. Yeah, once, but bigger. And world's bigger. He hit the singer with a squish. Holding his mouth with both hands to it to keep it from overflowing. Oh, uh, go away, I'm, I'm reading. Thank you. When he was finished, the heart... When he finished the heart, he licked his fingers clean. Wiped the blood from the chin onto his hands. And licked that up too like a dog in his bum. He removed his shirt. Held it above his face. Twisting the garment and raising the blood. Rings, rinsing the blood out into open mouth. It splashed the sides of his face with red. But he took care of it. John wouldn't dare waste a single drop with a long, anticipated lifeblood. He finally acquired. It was no easy task getting here, and the consequences would be unfathomable. So John savored every second. Like a dog licking his bowl, John made sure there was no blood for or pieces of flesh anywhere in the room that could be consumed. Finally, his quest was complete, and he could return to his room. John placed the lid back onto the box and turned toward, feeling satisfied and ready to leave. Again, he was frozen and gripped by impossible force of fear. Artemis. Oh god, that was a horrible voice for him. I'm sorry, sir, John. Artemis. He exclaimed to the slender body at the door. Uh, so, person the door is Bargamus, which stood close behind it. The light in the room was very faint, illuminating only the box. And so its rays fell to completely reach Bargamus. He was hugged by Shadow. Perhaps this is how he entered without raising an alert. But how did John fail to hear him? He got careless. Caught up in unnecess caught up in the ecstasy of the heart, his eyes suggested John could now see Bartimus and his arms crossed. And the legal light that was on him showed he was wearing an expression that John couldn't quite put his finger on. Bartimus, I I he staggered, unsure of what to do or what to say, but Bargamus rose his hand and stopped John's attempts. Bargamus began to speak, to speak himself in his cold, crypt of a voice. Oh God, 
<clears throat> How many hearts were left, Jong? Jong felt the words pass through him like a ghost. I, I, how many? Bargamus's voice grew. Oh, how many? Bargamus's voice grew. He could feel the bass in his chest, and John knew. Knew he would have to confess. Uh, one, one, he answered. The sh shame clear in his voice. He wanted to scare down at his feet, but when not get a break, Barga misses gaze. How many are there now? None? Oh, none. How many? How many? Oh. I'll get better at this reading scuff, I'm sorry. This is my first time trying really not to be another copy paste person with this, but it's kind of. Because, you know, you can be a copy of anything, so who cares? And how many are there now? None. How many? His voice no longer sounded scared, but generally curious. John's voice, however, was still full of guilt, shame, and fear. None. John said again, a little louder this time. None. Bargamus's head perked up, the ends of his lips raising up to a smile. But, but oh my dear boy, you were sorely mistaken. You still one last heart, ripe and ready for taking. John was confused. Maybe he wasn't act. Maybe he wasn't actually caught after all. He. Didn't know how long Bargamus had been scanning there for. But still, John knew he would have to confess. Sure that his punishment would be worse if he were to lie. No, Bargamus. The box is empty. I, I ate it without permission. I'm sorry. Bargamus began to laugh. <laughs> Truly haunting sound it had been. <laughs> oh, silly boy. I don't mean in a box. <laughs> I'll just get a scarf that down like a scarf to wolf. No. Bogomus cleared the gap between them. Two steps. Whereas it took John at least six steps to get there. He twerked over John like a lanky giant. He placed his cold hand on John's shoulder and bent closer to John's unreal level. But not quite all the way. John found himself still having to crane his neck to meet Bargamus. Yeah, guys. I met you, Jonathan. Oh, his voice was broken. Um, Mike, are you good enough for this? I mean you. Oh, I mean in you, Jonathan. His voice was almost a whisper now. Nothing like a fresh young heart to get the cogs turning, yeah, boy. John was shocked in his gore. Shook, shot, yeah. He couldn't be serious. <laughs> but John began to protest, but before he could utter anything else, a flash of silver reflected in the faint light above him, followed by a sharp crushing pain in his chest, missing his heart to the right by two inches. Copyright statement. Unless explicitly stated, all stories published on creepypasta.com are the property of and under the copyright to their respective authors. Read it. It's not my story, it's theirs, obviously. House. And the property and under copyright to respective authors. It may not be narrated or performed in any of. Well, that's...
Oh, is this the very new creepypasta? Um, where is it? The Last Crimson Heart. Written by D. Charles. R.O.R. Was seven minutes? Uh, how long are we? Let me check. Twenty! If you enjoyed this, and, well, everything was fine. Well, drop a sub. Everything. But yeah, that'll do it for me.